So, we as humans, we have perception, we have stereotypes, and we see things and tag themselves and categorize them when we see them. So, what about those who we don't see? So, let me show you a picture and imagine what is the first thing that comes to your mind. Imagine how our, how our mind just tag it. These kids may be street beggars, maybe child sex worker, maybe child slaves. My mind was not able to tag them. So I call them invisible children. A recent report by UNICEF suggested that there are 230 million children globally who are officially invisible. What I mean by officially invisible is one out of three children who are under age five are not registered anywhere. In India, this, this problem reached another magnitude. 30% of this global invisible children live in India. The number is 71 million. So these statistics intrude a lot of questions in my mind. So there are three important questions which comes to my mind. These are, who are these children? How are they made invisible? And what can I do about this? So I'll try to answer these questions in my capacity and in my knowledge. The first question, important question is, who are these children? So these are children who are everywhere. These are all around us. We see them every day. We see them and we ignore them. So if I have to categorize broadly, there are six groups of uncounted children. The first group which I'm talking about are the unregistered. These are, these are the unregistered children. They, they don't get registered when they, when they born or when they die. When they are born or when they, they die. And almost one third of all children born in 2011 in India got unregistered. The other group of children are the unlucky. They are the children, they are the newborn who die in childbirth. A point to note here is that our national population census only count pregnancy related deaths, not maternal deaths. The third group which I am talking about is the unreachable. They are the children, they are the indigenous children living in the remotest part of the country, hard to reach, nobody reached them, nobody know how many of them exist. So no data. Fourth group which I am talking about are the untraced. They are the, they are the, they are the children who got trafficked. Who got trafficked for child labor, maybe for illegal adoption, or for any other reason. A data by a child rights agency in India suggested that one out of three children in 2010 missing was untraced. That same agency did a report in 2013 which suggested that one out of two missing children was lost forever. There was another group, the fifth group, which is the unclaimed. They are the children who are living as refugees. They are stateless. So no survey or no census counts such children. A global number of such children is 36.5 million. And of the, the global population of refugees is 36.5 million. And it is estimated that half of them are children. And the last group which I'm talking about is the unacknowledged. These are the children with disabilities. So our data provides a limited information about such children. 
So these are the six broadly categories where you find these unclaimed, these unregistered children. So my next question was, how are they made invisible? I used, to, I used to think about it, in my last four years of career, I never got this answer. I got this answer last month in a tweet done by a guy named Mr. Lex Looper. His tweets say, the Holocaust was legal, slavery was legal, segregation was legal. If you use the state as a metric for ethics, you will end up disappointed. So I believe that the best way to solve a problem in our country is not to count it. The most important question is how can I, I do, how, what can I do about this? So let me share a story with you guys. So four years back I was in college. I used to walk home every day and take the same route. In the, in the route there was an alley and in that alley, there was a cobbler who used to sit. Every day I used to see that cobbler, and I used to, I, I started realizing that there is a young, bright kid who used to sit next to him, always idle. Some, some days after, I started asking that cobbler, I, a I asked that cobbler, uh, that, is there anything wrong with your kid? Why he's always sitting? He very politely responded, my kid have a hole in his heart. I'm, I'm, I'm here for his medication. It's been two years now. He's recovering, but he still can't play. Then I had no answer. I didn't know what to say. I just went home and slept. After a few days, same thing. Th that, there was that curiosity I wanted to know about that child. I asked again, what about his education? Is he going to school? His father replied, no, we were in village all our life. The school was 12 kilometers from our village and my child can't walk that much. So he has never been to school. And it's two years now in Delhi. I, I have spent all my money on his medication. I don't have anything. I, even ha I don't have to buy him a pencil also. That kid was Ajay. So, I didn't know what to say again. I went home. I contemplated a few nights, and then I realized, what can I do about this child? I, the best thing which came to my mind is that I can fund his education. I was 22 at that time. I had some resources, and I realized, okay, that is the, that is, in my capacity, that is the best thing I could do. So I went again to the father and asked him, hey, can I help you in this? I want him to go to school and I'll fund his education. The father got happy. So me, Ajay, and his father, after a few weeks, landed up in a fancy school, sitting in a lobby, and talking to the school administrator. I did some homework. I was a management student, so I thought, let's do some homework before going. So I, I got to know about this economically weaker section quota. So I thought, OK, let's get him enrolled in that. So that school administrator, entertained as well and said, okay, just get these documents and we'll enroll this kid. So the first and foremost document was birth certificate. So I asked Ajay's father at that time that, okay, so can you provide me birth certificate? And he had no answer. I realized at that moment that there was no birth certificate. I asked Ajay's father, is there any way to get the birth certificate? He said, I don't know. He was, Ajay was born in village, had a home birth, so I don't know how to get it. I had that urge and a quest to get Ajay into a school. I realized, I didn't sleep for the whole night, I realized, okay, next day, I didn't go to my college. I took Ajay and went to, the, to his home village, which was in interiors of Hamirpur, UP. We took a 12-hour shitty bus ride and me and Ajay landed up in this local SDM office and talking to this government officer. And I asked him, hey, can you, 
I, I didn't know anything about birth certificate, so I just asked him, can you issue this kid his birth certificate? And he just laughed at me and said, oh yeah, just prove that he exists. Point to be noted, Ajay was standing next to me. So I just asked this officer, uh, so he, uh, he, he, he made a point. He asked me, okay, can you just get, get anything, any proof from the hospital where he was born? Knowingly that almost every kid in that village have or had birth, a home birth. So that was. So after some negotiation and some resource exchange, he issued uh, Ajay's birth certificate. We came back to Delhi and then started working on the rest of the list. The next, proof, the next uh, document which we have to go give to the school was address proof. Address proof for the father. So Ajay's family was living in Delhi from two years, was living in a slum. Slum don't have those rent agreements, don't have those legal electricity bills or uh, phone bills. That, I, that time I realized it's out of my capacity. I literally can't get this kid into a good private school. But, nobody, but then I realized nobody is stopping me to get him into a good government school. So why not that? So then, me, I, took, I took Ajay a few days after to this government school which was infrastructurally very sound. And, and the principal also entertained us. I asked him, so yes, so this is the child and I want to get him enrolled. He didn't ask us any certificate. He said, yeah, sure, get him, get him into third grade. He should be in third grade. But then I realized the biggest problem of our education space. Ajay was eight, have never been to school. His principal was asking him to sit with third graders. He can't cope, he, he didn't know anything about education. And I was asking him to sit with first graders who are five year old. So I realized somewhere he's out of education system. But then I, I always had this, that what can I do for Ajay? So I realized we went, we went empty hand from that school, came home back, and then we were very depressed. And me, Ajay, and Ajay's father, we discussed a lot. Ajay was just listening to us. Me and Ajay's father were disappointed. Then we, by this time, by this time, I was going to pass out of my college, got a job in a bank, and was about to do a job. I never realized that by this time, there was organically a life goal was cultivating inside me. So one day, the next day was my job joining, and that night I just went to Ajay's place, and. We, we went outside, bought a school dress, and I asked Ajay to come to school from tomorrow. So Ajay's father asked me which school, and I asked him, there's a temple here uh, in the community, and meet me there tomorrow morning. From, the, from next day, I started teaching Ajay and his younger brother every day for five hours, like a school, every morning. This happened for next six months. I never joined my job. We never realized when the other kids from community started coming to this school, to the temple school, and we used to teach them. We never realized a lot of my friends started coming and started teaching kids. So one day, we just randomly thought, let's pool in some money. We, we pool in some money, we took our rental premises, we bought uniform, we bought stationery, we bought books, and we just started teaching in that rental premises. And, but we never asked our kids for birth certificates, for address proofs, or anything. So this, today, I'm here. I'll just talk about Ajay. In April 2013, after rigorous studies of three years, Ajay appeared for a private school entrance exam for fourth grade. And he successfully made it. <laughs> he successfully made it. He's do today he's doing great in his fifth grade. Today he's doing great in his fifth grade. The day Ajay joined the private school, I took a job. It took me three years it took three years of my life to get a non-existing kid to a system where he should, 
he is getting all his rights what he deserved so i i personally believe that i had a concern what i did i just turned my concern into action thank you so much